Hello there guys, it's Joey. So I said today I would share with you a spell for sweetness and attracting positive things in the new year as we have just passed into 2017. So a very happy new year to everybody. And this little spell work is pretty simple and pretty effective. It's, it's a lovely little spell that uh, I sat here and uh, readjusted for the new year. So I'm going to talk to you about the things that you need and then I'm going to show you step by step the kind of thought process if you like behind it and how to incorporate all the different bits and pieces into a spell to bring sweetness into your 2017. It's ultimately about attracting positive energies, positive things, money, wealth, love, whatever you so desire into your life. And the things that you will need for this particular spell are a white candle. I've just got one of the little uh, basic spell candles that you can get quite cheaply and efficiently. And I'm actually going to put it on a black tea light base. So what we're actually doing with this is we will be lighting the black tea light, allowing it to melt down a little bit, and then placing that firmly in. You can use a... Uh, a little candle holder instead but what I like about this is the balance here between the black and the white so before you do an attraction spell you would do a cleansing and a banishing and it's still a good day to do um, to banish away the uh, lasting negativities of the previous year the things that are holding you back from the things that you really want for 2017 and so you might wish to do a full cleansing, a smudging, however you feel that uh, best suits your path working of cleansing beforehand. And you might do a black candle banishing, for example. And then if you then went on to do this attraction spell or something like it, you might want to have a black tea light base just to make sure it's grounded in that, that banishing of uh, that which no longer serves. It gives it a good uh, grounding uh, to draw in the positive elements of what you are looking for in 2017. So on the little spell candle, which you're not going to be able to see, I have carved, and I've used uh, my little standing knife, but uh, you can get tools or you can use a little nail or something, um, on both sides. Now what I have actually carved on is a wish on one side, and uh, my name and 2017 on the other side. Um, this spell will have, have been completed and sent off into the universe before the video is uploaded. So there you go. You could just put your name and 2017 on the candle on both sides if you are doing a general attraction spell, but if there was one thing that you wished for above all else in 2017, um, then you would write that on the candle and I have written things down the candle to draw down so it's towards you to draw things towards you if you were banishing you'd write away from you down the candle so there you go so that's the first two things you will need and then I'm going to be using some of the I guess painted Joey Starry Ad supplies maybe even uh, uh, attraction powder that I've created myself. I created this yesterday, uh, I created plenty of it, um, so I've got some for today. Now what went into this is three ingredients. The first is sugar. Now these are sugar skulls that were a gift uh, and then being gifted gives it a, a nice extra goodwill feeling to it but uh, it's not necessary for them to be gifted it's not necessary for them to be sugar skulls either I'm actually going to do a video about making your own like sugar skulls and how you might incorporate them into your magic and I'll probably do that in a day or two but I really loved receiving these um, they have a sort of more organic death element to them as well and because they have a death element to them it means putting behind the end of 2016 in order to bring all the sweetness. So it's basically, in terms of symbolism, putting to death things that are not sweet 
and then drawing things that are sweet into 2017. And sugar in general is used for sweetening situations. I think it's most commonly used in hoodoo practice, but you can find it in nearly all modern witchcraft practices such as it is. Sweetens moods, relationships, brings sweet things in, it can help stop gossip, it can help attract money. Um, the interesting thing about, that I find about sugar is that it was once one of these most coveted substances that was huge trade. That is still huge trade to this day, but being a student of history, I'm aware of the incredible impact it had and it changed culture and um, became sort of deeply ingrained in a culture's consciousness. Sugar in tea in England, for example. I don't have sugar in my tea. I'm sweet enough, but <laughs> honest. Uh, but there is a whole history of it being very coveted, needed. It was a symbol of status and wealth, and uh, it carries that vibration to this, uh, this day. So it can help you to bring to you that which you covet. And if you leave sugar out, <laughs> you're very likely to attract all manner of insects and wildlife to your home. Um, so it definitely has a natural draw, a natural bringing of energies to oneself and it makes the basis, the foundation of the sweetening powder. Then we have patchouli which was my herb of choice and as you can probably see prosperity loves sachets substitute for graveyard dirt. So patchouli, will you stand up? There we go. Um, patchouli is a good herb to use for general attraction, particularly if uh, prosperity and love magic kind of work together in the things that you would like for the coming year. The fact that it is sometimes used as a substitute for graveyard dirt and uh, was used originally to mask the smell of death um, gives it another more organic feel for me. Um, it's deeply sensual and sexual in a lot of ways. Um, patchouli is one of those ones that I've had to work to get to connect with because initially um, I really didn't like the scent of patchouli because um, I had only ever smelt it in kind of overpowering perfumes and not in its sort of raw herb form um, and it took me a little while to get rid of the associations of it being very overpowering and, and unpleasant um, and I think that for me brings an element of working for what it is that you want even though you're doing a spell to attract it you are opening your willingness to work for those things as well it's it's a spell that will put into practice what you mean to do in a physical sense, in a very real sense, uh, to back up the spell work. So it's a willingness to engage with the spell work, if you like, for me, with patchouli. And that's not going to be the same for everybody. And the herb that you may or may not choose to put into this particular spell crafting is going to be largely based on the herb that you connect with and the energies of which you really wish to attract. So if you were purely going for kind of a, a spell for attracting wealth, finances and money, you might go with a basil, for example. Uh, if you were going for a pure love, um, you might go for more of a rose. A rose is, you know, your very stereotypical love herb. Let's see, if you're going for a healing, you might go for a hyssop or a rue, that sort of thing, um, if you are wanting to attract good health uh, and, and cleansing in 2017. But for me, I like the balance here. I like the idea of it being um, associated with a substitution for graveyard dirt as well, because again, that gives us another level of getting rid of um, 2016 and drawing from 2017. It's like we put that behind us and what we want in 2017 very much is to move forward with this situation 
and not be dwelling on the negativity from 2016. And the final thing that has gone into uh, mine, mine, my own, my precious, is powdered snakeskin. Uh, naturally gathered powdered snakeskin and this uh, came from when I went to visit my sister and went in the pagan shop there. Um, so the year has been, this year has been a year of personal, this, the year gone by, sorry, has been one of the alchemy um, and, and it being a very difficult year of alchemy for a lot of us and, and facing the parts of ourselves which are difficult. And really snake skin and the shedding of one's skin in terms of snake imagery is about personal transformation, is about the change that we wish to seek within our lifetime, within this next year, um, and we wish for the situation to change in order to attract the things that we wish to attract. Um, so that's why I chose to use uh, sh sh <laughs> naturally shedded snake skin, say that seven times fast tongue twister. And I really liked kind of having that uh, energy within because the snake for me has been very powerful and there's a crow on the roof opposite hi um sorry and <laughs> it's like mama going I, i'm watching you and i am keeping an eye and uh, the snake has a, a lot of really strong imagery and has had a very strong impact uh, and it's very much about transformation there's the ouroboros as well um the symbol of infinity and eternity uh, snake devouring its own tail uh, and the real tapping into something bigger than oneself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of travel energy within sort of snake as well as metamorphosis. So there's a lot of internal travel uh, and as well as external travel associated with it. Um, and I really wanted that to be incorporated into this particular attraction blend. So um, each is then of course imbued and placed into the bowl and uh, I used a little mortal and pestle. I actually did it in a different bowl and just popped it in this bowl for imbuing yesterday. Um, so it's just all crush, 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 crush. But to imbue something as you are doing it, you're basically filling your intention into it. Um, you might sing, you might speak, you might hum, you might uh, just visualise it glowing, uh, you might speak what each herb is useful for and the things you wish to draw to you and so on and so forth. It's really a personal process of creating and imbuing. So, I am going to just light the little black tea light to get it melting while we talk about the final stages of this fairly simplistic uh, witchcraft spell for attraction. And I have left my matches over the other side of the camera. So, whoop. so you can write on the black if you wish, on the black candle on tea light, you know, banish 2016. But um, I did all of mine yesterday, so with regards to bye bye 2016. So the final thing that you're going to uh, use in uh, the attraction spell is honey. So honey is kind of similar to sugar. It can be used uh, in sweetening, and again, I think it's probably most commonly used and most popularly popularly well known from uh, hoodoo, particularly in like, you know honey jars and things, sweeten situations, etc. Uh, da, 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 da. Sweeten it's often used in spells um, to make people think well of you, um, but it's also used uh, uh, for offerings to gods, spirits, fae, etc. Uh, and can be used for sexuality, sex magic, love, prosperity, healing, aphrodisiac. Uh, I, can't, I think for me as well though, honey has this quality of eternity because honey doesn't go off. It's like one of the only natural substances which doesn't rot. And because of that, 
not only does it sweeten a situation, not only does it draw and attract and create positivity within a situation, not only can it stick situations, it, it forms a very good binding element to your spell, and now there are seagulls, I'm being stalked by seagulls. <coughs> we had crows and seagulls arguing with each other on the roof the other day, it was a bit... <laughs> Interesting. Um, not only does it act as a binding element because it's sticky and it, and it can bind things together very much like when you're cooking and cooking is alchemy, but it has this quality of eternity. It lasts and therefore everything that we're drawing to us isn't going to be short term small potatoes, it's going to be drawing things that are going to change our life for the better on a permanent basis. So uh, I'm not going <laughs> to hold the honey pot over the, <laughs> over the camera because it's quite a big pot of honey and it's just a a bit of a pain and also I'm going to be using my fingers and I'm going to be anointing the candle with honey down now towards again so I'm going to attempt to do this on camera I'm using my projective hand my hand which I write with the hand which you cast with um, to just draw honey and you can put my fingers down the candle. I'm going to do it three times. You might want to twist the candle a little just to make sure you get all sides covered. You don't have to use your hands if you're really opposed to it, but uh, I think it does you good to get your fingers into the magic, into the magic work. Okay, and then, I don't know if I can do this on camera or not, uh, mm, mm. <laughs> okay, I'm working with limited space, so probably the best way is just to hold it over and just work it down. Again, you can, there we go, see, and it'll, it should stick nice and really nicely because it's uh, sugar and honey. Okay. Then you can just hold it on top of your uh, tea light. Now hold it still for a little minute until two crows fly over. Uh, we are having crows versus seagulls right now. Anyway, hold it down until it stands up, until the wax has dried sufficiently to hold your candle up. Right, then you're probably going to want to uh, wash your hands with a cloth. <laughs> or you can keep your hands uh, covered in, in uh, sugar and honey as you fill your intention into the candle. Uh, you can do this in a whole number of ways and really it's a largely personal process to how you best utilize candle magic. You can see your candle glowing, um, you can see it working in your mind's eye, you can draw down so you can visualize as if you were drawing down the moon, you're drawing energy down into yourself. Hey crows, they're on the roof now, hi! <laughs> um, so you draw down energy into the candle. Apologies. Every time I sit here and start doing spot work, there are always crows about and I get completely distracted. Uh, so you're drawing energy down, down into the candle and into yourself, into your life. Uh, you can visualise what it is that you want to see within your life, within your mind's eye. So you're giving a visual image to yourself of the spell being done. And you just know that in your heart and in your bones and in your soul, it's done. There is no disagreement, there is no argument, it just is meant to be that way. And that's it. And the more you believe it, like the crazier that you have that belief, uh, the more the universe uh, seeks to align with that belief and make it so, make it physical, make it real. And it's only when uh, doubts and things are allowed to get in the way of what we are seeking to achieve that we kind of create our own blocks and our own barriers. So in terms of attraction, we really want to attract and draw what we absolutely positively want in order to attract that into our lives. 
And then of course you light the candle. And what you do from there is entirely up to you. Some people would just let it burn and, and leave it alone and just do it. Some people would sit with the candle the entire time and keep visualising and keep uh, chanting, singing, humming for the effect of the candle. Depends uh, what perhaps how urgent, perhaps. If you want, need something desperately urgently, then uh, keep infusing, keep going, keep, keep sort of pulling that energy to you in terms of sat there with a candle. You can do a mixture of both. You know, you can um, allow it to burn down and keep coming back at you know five-minute intervals or so, and just refilling that energy and redirecting and repurposing and keeping drawing that energy to yourself for 2017. Right, so that's it. It's a fairly simplistic little candle spell. Um, it's it's nice, though. I like it. It's a, a good little thing that you can keep doing. Um, a, well, you, you can do it once a month. You could do it once a week. You could do it regularly if you so desired. Um, but I think it really fits really nice with uh, working with energies of 2017. Okay, so that's it for this particular video, and many blessings.